Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1614. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to share with you today two very special returning guests here on Cars Yeah, Jim and Mike Ring. They're calling in from Green, I'm sorry, they're calling in from Green Spring, Wisconsin. Hey, Jim. Hey, Mike. Welcome back to Cars Yeah. How are you guys doing? Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? We are, but I got to correct you a little bit. We're from Spring Green. Oh, Wisconsin. Spring Green, yes. <laughs> I've had people ask me if we still live in the green, the green spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is kind of a little bit backwards, but uh, uh, definitely a spring green. So there you go. We'll have some fun here today. Well, listen, as we get started, I'm going to ask each of you a question that I did not ask you last time you were on the show. I'm going to ask you to share with me individually, what's one thing that most people don't know about each of you? So I'm going to start with Jim. Well, I think one thing that people don't know about me is that I'm a, I like old junk. I like old signs. I like old cars. I like old, old gas pumps. It doesn't matter. I just, for some reason, that stuff just makes me smile and, and I enjoy it. Very cool. Well, I'm not surprised by that considering you guys build some of the best old cars made new again. How about you, Mike? What's something that most people don't know about you? Well, I really, I only have one hobby, and uh, Jim could contest to that. It's it's golf. Other than work, that's all I do. So, um, in the winter, it it makes for a long winter and a lot of a lot of work hours. Yeah, not much golf where you live in the winter time, unless you now can't you golf in the snow if you use those orange balls. Well, if you could find it, it would <laughs> sink. I would think. <laughs> I think so. Well, listen, let me give you guys a proper introduction. Even though you've been on the show, you were on the show almost to the day five years ago. So for those listeners that may be new to Cars Yeah, which I have a lot of them, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that show because we're going to talk about some different things today. But let me give you guys a proper introduction. Jim and Mike Ring, co-founders of A Ring Brothers, were born with a passion for creating cars more exciting than anything else on the road. The pair began tinkering before they were old enough to to drive as their ambitions grew so did their need to build faster and more powerful and more exciting machines that was once a hobby has now turned into a business and they began to gain the attention of aftermarket industry elites and private collectors as well today jim and mike build their iconic street machines design and produce aftermarket parts and work on local cars in their auto body business in many ways the boys haven't changed a bit all that much since their early days tinkering with cars Whatever cars they could get their hands on, as a matter of fact, only now they build and have more power and desire to win over automotive enthusiasts all around the world. We'll be back in a minute to talk to Jim and Mike, but first a word from our valued sponsors that I hope you support. They make this show possible, so sit tight and we'll be right back. Do you have a pet in your household that loves to go for a ride? Our pets are part of our families, but they can be very hard on your vehicle's interior. Well, Covercraft has you covered. They offer a wide variety of solutions to protect your vehicle's interiors from Fido's rough treatment. Canine cargo area covers are padded for comfort and provide door-to-door protection. Pet pads have built-in features to keep cargo areas and seats protected. Covercraft solutions cover cargo areas, bucket or bench seats, and protect from damaging claws, pet fur, hair, mud, moisture, and that occasional drool from permanently damaging your vehicle's delicate surfaces. Choose from a variety of styles and colors that cover almost every vehicle made. Is your dog getting a little old? Covercraft even has a pet ramp so your trusted companion can get himself into and out of your vehicle. Here's something special to you from me at Cars Yeah. If you go to Covercraft.com and use the code YEAH120, Y-E-A-H-120, you get 10% off your Covercraft order. Go to Covercraft.com today and use the code YEAH120 and you'll get this special 10% off. Tell Fido it's from me. That's Covercraft.com. Use YEAH120 at checkout. Covercraft, they've got you covered. Woof. 
American Collectors Insurance, that's how I now protect my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. Are you insuring your classic vehicles on your regular daily driver auto policy? Then your special vehicles are at risk. Your regular auto insurance carrier won't tell you how much you'll get until after a claim, and more than likely, you'll be in for a rude awakening. With a agreed value policy from American Collectors Insurance, you'll be paid your vehicle's full agreed value. No surprises. If you're driving your collector car less than 5,000 miles a year, do what I did. Call American Collectors Insurance and get your very own agreed value policy tailored to your specific vehicle. If you're like me, you're picky about who works on your special ride. A great policy allows you to choose your repair shop of choice, and that means you'll know the job is done right. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. They've been protecting vehicles since 1976. Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love. I did at American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. What do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 professional wins, multiple wins at the 24-hour of Daytona, and a win at Le Mans? Well, if you're Kevin Buckler, racer and the racing group's team owner, you create Adobe Road Winery. Located in Petaluma, California, he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series, four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, and a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today I'm going to tell you about Redline. It's a rich and complex blend delivering a taste of ripe blackberries, black cherry licorice, and a hint of toasty oak. An added very cool option is that this features the world's first interactive wine label. That's right. When you pour the wine, the three-dimensional tachometer actually hits the red line. It's incredible. The Racing Series is a killer gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life, and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYEAH, all one word in all caps, when you go to checkout, you'll get $10 off any purchase of wines from the Racing Series. The wine ships promptly and arrives quickly right at your door. Use the code CARS yeah at checkout for $10 off of your purchase today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARS yeah to save $10 today. Cheers! So as we continue on your journey, guys, I always like to ask my guests for some kind of a success quote, a mantra, some kind of saying that has meaning for them. I'm going to start with you, Jim. So share one of those uh, meaningful slogans with us, will you? Um, I would have to say, never blow out somebody else's candle to make yours shine brighter. (laughs) Now, where did that come from? It actually came from my mother. Yeah. Yeah. sounds like something a mom would say. What what does that have? What does that give you meaning for? When you hear that, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, just do what you do, right? And and if they like it, great. And if they don't, you know, the next guy may. It just doesn't pay to to uh, you know cut them with somebody else's work or yeah. or anything they do to make you feel better or look better. What a great thing that your mom gave you that legacy she gave you and that that mindset. It's it's so important. And boy, I wish a lot of people these days in the world we're living in would think that way as well. How about you, Mike? You know. There was seven kids in one bathroom, and mom had a different quote every day. So I think a lot of those quotes stick in Jim and my head. Yeah. And another one she had that really, I think Jim and I try to to live by is, is sweep your own doorstep first. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just meaning take care of of what you do, and uh, really good things will come. You, you just... You just take care of the little things, and uh, the big things will come. I really think those are they're kind of maybe goofy to some people, but when you grew up with your mom every day putting a different thing that she come up with on, I mean, we have thousands of them. Wow. But some of them just kind of stick with you, so it's pretty special. Another one is if 
if you can get over the dog, you can get over the tail. <laughs> <laughs> I love your mom. She sounds like one special lady. And, you know, th- this is so important. And when you, you look out in the world today and some people that are misbehaving, definitely they did not have a mom like yours in their life to set them on the right course and, and give them direction. And I love that. Sweep your, your own porch first. Yeah. Take care of your own things. Wonderful, wonderful quotes. Well, let's talk about your business because it's been five years since you've been on the show. No doubt over five years, you guys have done a lot of stuff. You've been doing a lot more things. And one of the things I wanted to start with was last year's SEMA show, you walked away with the Battle of the Builders and you built the most insane 69 Camaro that I think I've ever seen. That color is stunning. It's titled, and I'm going to say this wrong, Valkyrie? How do I say that? Well, it is. You, it is. I would be lying to you if I couldn't even say it myself. <laughs> but it is the spelling of Valkyrie in Belgium. So I think we probably need somebody from Belgium to pronounce it for us. Yeah, yeah. I've asked the owner four times to tell me how to say it, and I still can't repeat it. So yeah, that's a tough <laughs> language. Well, I would love for you guys to talk a little bit about that car because one of my good friends ended up in second place to you guys, uh, Louis Shevchik who did an amazing build of a, of a foreign car that turned it into kind of American hot rod. And I'll tell you, Louie told me, he said, if I was going to lose out to anybody, those guys are the guys to lose out to because his respect for your build quality. And Louie's a pretty damn good <laughs> builder and fabricator as well. So tell me a little bit about this car. Like, where did the concept come from? And I'll make sure that we put some links to some pictures of this on your show notes page because it is one of the coolest Camaros. And you guys don't do anything conventional to start with. So tell me about Valkyrie. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Larry, there wasn't a better guy. And that's actually who Jim and I picked to win it. I I fell in love with that car. I guess he had me with the 2002 tail lights in it, but that thing looked like a James Bond car and what a class guy he is and his kids in the, in the audience. And it was, it was really cool. It yeah. was, he's a great man and I've only met him once and he's a, he's a very talented dude and humble is, is a good word for him. Louis Shevchik, JNL Fabricating built that car and he's, he worked on my race cars back when he's been a guest on this show. He's the most humble, one of the nicest, genuine people you'll ever meet. So you you had him pegged to the T. So thank you for those kind words. Yeah, he's a, he's a good man, good family. Yeah. Um, Valkyrie was a car that a young man actually from Belgium, they happened to be built, bought a plant in Wisconsin and he had been following us and asked us to come in and he wanted to build a Camaro. He liked Don's car. What was that called? G code. He liked that car, but it was a little bit too um, manly. He wanted something more aggressive. Uh So working with our designer, we thought, man, if we're going to do another 69, we want to, we want to do end all 69. And in our mind, obviously there's like a 32 Ford, no matter how many times they're done, they're still cool. But we wanted to say, what would we do? And, we kind of blew that car up, you know, it's five inches wider in the rear, three inches wider in the front, moved the wheelbase ahead an inch and a half. And the only part, even though it looked very 69, the only thing that would fit on an original 69 would be the side glass. Wow. Bars in the doors and in the rear, not the front windshield, nothing else would fit a stock 69. So that was quite an undertaking. We we actually machined the whole car. Every mold, every bumper was machined, the lights, the grill. There wasn't anything that wasn't machined on the exterior. Wow. And obviously the most part on the interior. Yeah. So it was uh, quite an undertaking that we had never done to that level. We were lucky enough to have a, a guy that would let us do it. And uh, we've learned a lot from it, and we're actually incorporating that technology in, in more of our builds right now. When you open the hood of that car, there's a giant red menace under the hood. <laughs> what? What's the? Explain the power plant that's sitting under that thing, because it looks like a giant beating heart that's about to explode. 
And so Wagner built, Carl Wagner was our engine builder. He actually just passed away. That was, uh, it was, it was about a year ago. So really more than a year ago. And, uh, it was probably the last motor Carl built, but it was a 416 cubic inch LS, uh, with a running a Whipple supercharger on it, making around a thousand horse. Oh. We actually detuned it a little bit because he, he didn't really want all that power, but, it was probably by the time he ended up with it, it was making eight fifty ish. I mean it's capable of over a thousand by changing the, the blower pulley and putting more boost in it. But it the car really, really felt good because it was the entire car was carbon fiber and all of the weight was down low in that car. Even moving that wheel front wheel ahead an inch and a half, pushing the motor back as far as we good could for center of gravity, it it just that car just felt unbelievable to drive. You could feel all the weight in the bottom of the car. It just felt good. Well, let me talk a little bit about, or ask you a little bit, have you talk about your business these days, because it's been five years since you were a guest on the show. You guys do so much more than just build cars. I mean, you fabricate parts. You, you, the cars you build have always been blown up is a good way to put it, you guys, because that seems to be what you do when you do a car. So d tell me what you've been up to the last five years. I know that's a big question to ask and we don't have hours to talk, but uh, how has your business evolved in the last five years? We've got cars from all over the world. You know, we never thought that that we would be building cars for people in London and in Belgium and in New Zealand. And so that, I guess, is kind of cool to to have you know, that kind of reach is just interesting to us. And right now we are, we are just really, really busy. We have a lot of projects going on. We're actually doing a, we're doing a 72 K5 blazer right now for future, who is a, a very popular rap singer. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got a 70 Chevelle for a Mason Plumley, who's a pro basketball player, plays for the Denver Nuggets. He's from Indiana. We've got uh, a 69 Mustang Fastback for a gentleman out of Iowa, a 65 Convertible for a guy out of Superior, Wisconsin, a 69 Full Carbon Camaro for a guy out of Madison, 69 Charger for a guy from New Zealand, a 68 Cougar for a guy oh from Wisconsin. Gosh. We've got a really wild 48 pickup that looks like it ran into a Formula One car for a guy out of Milwaukee. We've got uh, a 70, another really wild 72 K5 Blazer for a guy out of Ohio. That's about 1,400 horse. Whoa. Um, we're just overwhelmed uh, with wow. this business. And, you know, continue to produce new products and, and uh, new parts for the aftermarket industry. So things have been good for us. I mean, we can't complain. Well, no, I think not. So, you know, I've been asking all my guests how this pandemic has affected their business. First and foremost, everybody in your life and your family and your employment been healthy, okay? Everything's been good in that department. Good. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Well, I'm really proud of you guys. I I'm not surprised with your success and your growth because what you do is is so insane. It's so cool. Everything about what you guys are doing is fantastic. And again, for you listeners, you got to go out and check this car. We'll put links to pictures to it because you will be blown away when you see it. It's just over the top, like any Ring Brothers build. Uh, one of the things I like to ask my guests here is uh, to talk a little bit about a challenge. And I know last time we were on the show, you each individually talked about different challenges that you face. But I want to ask it in maybe a little different way. You guys being brothers, there's always an interesting relationship between brothers. They always get along, but there's always maybe some uh, interfighting, I guess. Maybe that's a harsh way to put it. But let me ask you this. Having worked together so long, together as brothers... Have you been faced with any challenges with that relationship in your business? Or do you both have your own kind of separate approach to how you do things and you each go off and do that thing yourself? Mike's in one building and I'm in another building. That's probably a blessing, first of all. <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah. And then we have a middle building that we meet in and fight in every day. So. <laughs> the octagon. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think every building, uh, you know, business has challenges. I think one of one of my frustrations is is uh, out of space. Can't seem to have everything you need for that car in, in one spot. It seems to get scattered. There's just 
a lot of little things in business that could be cleaned up. And yeah. no matter who did it, nobody remembers. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's challenges, but I mean, for the most part, we get along. We, we, uh, I don't know, we're just getting older. So, uh, <laughs> well, you both have, we, you both have a lot of respect for each other. I know that. Yeah. yeah. We just, you know, you don't sweat the small stuff like you did when you're younger and felt was so important. And I don't know. You really realize you don't sweat the small stuff. And yeah. I used to get pretty upset when they would chip or, you know, do the body work and paint it and I get chipped up. And I used to just come off the rails because somebody didn't protect it. But it's like, you know, once it's done, what's the sense of, you know, it's, it's disheartening and you get screaming and it just doesn't change anything. So I think when you get a little older, you don't sweat the small stuff like you used to. It sounds like uh, some maturity has uh, dropped into your lives a little bit, which is always a good thing, right? Yeah, and and obviously taking a nap for 20 minutes at, <laughs> at one time. <laughs> that helps. That, that, that actually helps. You know, I, I, I thought that was a bunch of bullshit in kindergarten, but actually that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, I, I, think, <laughs> I think I agree with you there. I think there's something we learned in kindergarten that maybe we should all be doing every day. A couple, yeah. a, a little cup of milk and cookies and a nap and uh, things are a lot better yeah. when you wake up after 20 minutes. Yeah. I think that's great. Well, yeah. listen, let's take a short break. Uh, let's thank our sponsors here. And we come back. Uh, I want to dive a little deeper into your guys' individual passion for cars because obviously you guys are car guys. I mean, this stuff you're doing is so insane. So sit tight, keep the seatbelt on, and we'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation to talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through automotive-related events, car shows, and drives. Among those nonprofits is RPM Foundation, a terrific organization working to keep our favorite collector cars on the road. RPM was created to ensure that the specialized skills needed to care for classic automobiles, boats, and motorcycles continue to be passed down from generation to generation. They do this by supporting training for young people with a passion for restoration and setting them up with mentors who can share their valuable knowledge. So far, they've awarded more than $3.5 million to restoration education projects across 35 states. Incredible. To learn more about RPM or to donate to their mission, visit www.rpm.foundation. You'll be glad you did. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. And don't miss my weekly podcast with Keith Martin titled Buy, Sell, Hold. It's the essence of collecting. We talk to the movers and shakers in the collector car world. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yeah for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. All right, you guys, uh, we're back, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this personal passion you two have for cars. When you guys were growing up, you started working on cars at a pretty young age together, right? Yeah, we. Uh, this is Mike. Yeah, we started long before we could drive. I mean, we we just love cars. You know, we do. We'd eventually have one. So I think we, our first actual car we ever worked on was an old Volkswagen that was up in our uncle's farm that was behind a barn that there was no brakes in it. 
but we got it to run and drove it in the fields where we couldn't hit anything. And, you know, we probably got hooked on this little Volkswagen that, you know, you have, a, I've said it before, but it's like the bringing like Frankenstein to life, you know, it's something that you just bring to life that had no life for a long time. And, uh, um, it, it just gets in your blood to, to, to do stuff like that and make a motor run. Remember there was some motors that we would get from Kramer's yard. It was a big construction company's yard that they'd throw away and we would, uh, hold on to it and try to get it running and boy when that took off you know a little five horse motor and jumping around on the concrete trying to hold it down and (laughs) you know it's a a weird feeling why that affects people the way it does and I, i i don't have the answer for that but there's really something about bringing something to life i guess that's like playing doctor in a different way i guess sure yeah absolutely you know, I, I asked you guys last time you were on the show to talk about your first really special car. This time, what I'm going to ask each of you is to talk about a build that you've done that's really, really special for you. Now, I know this is like asking which is your favorite child, so I'm not going to ask it that way. But let's just put it this way, and I'll start with you, Jim. When you think back to all the vehicles that you guys have built, which build really, really stands out in your mind? Well... There's a lot of them, you know, that I think are cool, but if I wanted one parked in my garage, it'd probably be the producer, which is a 65 Mustang wide body we did a few years back. Is it the, the best car we've ever done? By far, probably not, but if, if you're, if, you're, if I'm looking at it as a way what I'd like in my own garage, that would be the car. Yeah, well, that was a very special car. And, and you guys tend to make you create names for your cars. Uh, the producer. I mean, there's a good example in Valkyrie, however you say that in Belgium. Uh, but is that something yeah. that you started early on, or is that something that came from a client? Yeah, it actually came from a from a guy that said, you know, if you don't name your car, they're going to get lost. Meaning, you know, people say, hey, did you see that purple car of the Ring Brothers or that blue car of the Ring blue Brothers Mustang. or blue Mustang? You know, but right. when he said, you guys really need to put a name to these so people can remember them, you know, it's kind of like naming one of your kids, you know, sure. after you do two or three of them, you can't remember them at all if they didn't have a name. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, well, Mike, when you look back at the cars you guys have built, these spectacular rides, is there one that really stands out for you? Yeah, I would, you know, there's a few, obviously they all have their special things and the recoil, there's a lot behind that car that I, I like in the, in the build, but, for me, it it is Valkyrie in that it was such a big undertaking, and there was a little fighting amongst each other here on that and the amount that we were the effort we were going into, and a lot of it was work that we had subbed out with the you know five access milling of the molds and some some big dollar things that we really didn't know what we were getting into, um, but when it all came together and I knew we could pull it off. Um, that to me was, and and really, believe it or not, Jim drives all the cars. He always gets out of them and going, oh, you know, this or this or this. And this. when he got out of that and said, this car really is the best driving car we've ever done. That's what you really want, right? Because there's a lot of cars that, you know, we could drive over the years because of suspension. You know, if we go back 15 years or, or more, not even that. There's just things that bother you about all of them that you want to fix that you really had no idea what this would cause that. Or um, like you learn what not to do over the years. Yes. Yeah, we steer away from from things. Cause, but for that car to drive as well as it did and come together and uh, have the reaction from the owner. I mean, Jim gave him a ride and his father actually has a Varan. Jim didn't even have it. You know, we didn't have all the power put into it. And he said that this thing's faster than my dad's Varan. Oh, my gosh. That, that was quite something. That is saying something. Holy cow. Yeah. Well, here's a question I didn't ask you guys, but I've been asking my guests for some time. And it, it requires a little thought. But bear with me here. I'm going to get into your heads a little bit. Think of me as your therapist. Uh, if you guys woke up tomorrow... And you were manifest 
as a car, not what you want to be, but how you perceive your personality in a vehicle. And it could be a build that you guys have built. I'm good with that. What kind of vehicle would you be? And I'll start with Jim. I'd have to say that Volkswagen bug because I get stepped on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. I, not what I would expect at all, but that's a that's a great honest answer. How about how, okay, Mike? You got to beat that one. Yeah, that's funny because I hadn't really thought about it. But you know what I what I was at one time to what I am now, I really am like an old. I'm an old Model T. You know, I'm just. I got a lot of aches and I got a lot of rattles, you know, I'm getting up there. I need two knees. And so I'm getting old and got a lot of creeps and uh, <laughs> that's what I am now. I, I, I'd like to be a Ford GT, well, of course. but I'm not there right now. At yeah. one point I felt that was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all getting older guys. I haven't lost the passion. You know, I'm, I don't ever see myself retiring. That's the weird thing. Well, you know, you guys answering the way you did, it kind of led me to that question is when you think of the future of the Ring Brothers, I mean, you guys are getting a little bit older. I'm not going to call you old, but we're all getting a little bit older, thankfully. The op- the alternative to getting older, of course, is death, which none of us want that. Right. So I'm, I'll take getting older, but where do you see, I mean, are there some legions behind you that you see can take over this business as you guys kind of go golf and go hang out with your OVW bug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, not yet. I mean, we're hoping to. We we would sure like to. We'd sure hate to build this and then just close the door someday. I think that would be sad. Yeah. Uh, we do have some young young people. We're, we're hiring, you know, our parts department, pretty much everybody in their early to mid-20s. Mm-hmm. Um, we just hired another female um, that's our first body tech and she's young and there's hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we definitely would like to pass it on, but honestly, haven't even thought about that. That hasn't been, we haven't worried about end game yet. Cause like you said, what's next and right. we're not willing to, willing to give this up yet. Oh, absolutely. Not with that list of cars you're building right now. Holy cow. you got, you got your hands full. Well, let's dive into uh, what I call the last lap here. I'm going to ask you some questions and get some quick blips of the throttle answers from you. If I can wave a magic wand and arrange for you guys to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry. Now, this could be somebody living today or deceased. Who would you guys like to have a drink or a meal with? And we'll start with Mike. You know, I've been lucky enough to have a meal with Jay Leno a few times, and I, I wouldn't mind having another one with him. He's just a genuinely nice individual, and uh, I, I enjoy his company. So every, every time I do that, I, I really enjoy it. And it's, it's not just talk about cars, but life in general. And he's a, he's a good human being, and I'd probably take another meal with Jay. I think that'd be cool. Now, how about you, Jim? Honestly, I'd have to say it would be my dad. We lost him a few years ago. He was obviously, you know, raised us on a small Shelly gas station, which obviously probably got us into cars and gasoline. So there's nothing I'd like better than to have a sit down and have a meal or a drink with my dad again. Yeah, I lost my dad about three and a half years ago. I'd like to, I'd like to do the same thing. I understand that. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, when it comes to Hiring a company like you guys to build an incredible build, what's the best advice you would give me? Let's say I was coming to you with an open checkbook and I had one of those big golfer's checks that are very long and large and have lots of zeros on them. What's the best advice you would give me as I started this undertaking? When this car is done, whatever it may be, will not be a brand new Mercedes or a new Lexus. They're 100% hand built by guys that that do the best they can. They're, they're great, fun, reliable cars, but you probably will have a few issues with it. And, uh, you know, if you're expecting a Lexus, go buy a Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's tremendous advice. I've, I've been around people. I've never had a car built for me custom like that, but it's great advice. I think it's good advice too if you're going to get into having your first old car. You need to get in it and drive it because it's nothing like a new car and you need to be prepared for something very different. So 
Great advice. I think that's fantastic. Is there a resource, kind of a go-to for you guys that you're really fond of? This could be maybe a website you're really fond of, or it could be an app you use every day. It could be a podcast, anything it might be that you think our listeners might enjoy uh, learning about. You know, it wouldn't be me with any of the techie stuff because I still got my flip phone and, <laughs> and that's usually not charged. So it wouldn't be a techie thing. Um, you know, that's a tough question for me, Mike. It would be just the people that we've met over the years, you know, transmission guys. Uh, we have a wealth. We're so lucky that we know all these people and all the most of the owners of these companies and take our calls. Um, we're just lucky and, and that's just time and from doing what we do and yeah. relationships that we've had and um, we can find an answer for pretty much any question we have now where I think when we were starting out and a lot younger, it was a lot tougher, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, we just have a lot more resources and the way you get those resources is you be good to everybody. You treat everybody the same. You never know who you're talking to. Right. Um, it's, uh, you know, car guys are generally good people, easy to talk to. And, uh, um, I would say the advice that I could give to a young builder or somebody coming up is, you know, treat everybody with respect. And I think it goes a long way. And don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to ask the questions. I think a lot of people are afraid to ask. Yeah, I ask the dumbest question you've ever. Yeah, heard. I mean, people look at us like, "What are you asking that for?" That's basic one one. Well, nothing's basic, and you know, at our age, you forget, so you got to get told <laughs> a bunch of times. Yeah, but you know, just don't be afraid to ask people. We're just lucky enough to have a big list that we can call. Yeah. You know, it's a great answer to that question is the people around you reach out to the people. And you're right. The car industry is full of spectacular people who are willing to share, uh, willing to offer advice, willing to help you work through things. Uh, it's it's one of a, it's a very unique industry, I believe. Now, are you guys uh, are you big book readers? Are there any uh, is there like a book that maybe each of you've read that you could share with our listeners? You think they would glean some great information from? Mine's finding Waldo just because I can never find any parts in the field. <laughs> I'm constantly on the search for what I'm looking for. So I go home and see if I can find Waldo in that damn book. Yeah, here's the thing. You're going to have to start painting uh, red and black stripes on everything so you can find it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, not really. I mean, uh, I, I am not. I, you know, I can honestly tell you Jim and I were not the best students when it came to school, it had a great point. I just went up a lot when we left. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's okay because uh, you guys are so busy doing what you love. I mean, that's what, how you're fulfilling your life, and that's perfectly fine. I think that's great. Uh, one of the things I always share with people here that if they think they might like books, but they're not book readers, is to use audiobooks. My wife gets all of her audiobooks from our public library. And a lot of people don't know this, but you can go to your public library, get a library card, and they will send you audiobooks right to your tablet for free. Wow. wow. Yeah, most people don't even know that exists. Yeah, that would be great, you know, traveling and stuff. Yeah. Much more interesting than listening to the radio. So I think that's a great idea. Unless it's the Cars Yeah podcast, then I might have to argue with you there. But, uh, uh, and especially when the Ring Brothers are back on the show. But yeah, I encourage people to do that because uh, even if you like working in your garage or your yard or whatever you like to do, running, walking, biking, uh, audiobooks are a great way to uh, enjoy books in a very different capacity. And some of these voices that they use to read these books are fascinating. Well, I'm up to the checkered flag here with you guys, and I'm going to buy each of you a very cool collectible car, but I'm going to spin the question this time on you. I'm going to ask it this way. Jim and Mike, if I could have you guys build, each of you, a very cool custom car, what would you like the Ring Brothers to build for you? And I'm going to start with Mike. So I want you to describe it in this way. Tell me the year and model and then maybe some of the unique features you would like created Ring Brothers style into this very unique build that Mark's going to put the check for. So, Mike, what can the Ring Brothers build you? Wow. You know, believe it or not, I would probably go for a, a European car, you know, being your friend's car with the TT taillights. I, 
it really inspired me to do. I, I would like to do Ferrari with a Ford motor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that, especially in the era of Ford versus Ferrari. That would stick it to both of them a little bit, Yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. kind of fun. But I see that, you know, after that car that Louis built, to take that European style but put some American muscle under the hood and then do a Ring Brother blow up on that thing, I would love that. Now, let me, let me ask you this. When you say Ferrari, is there a specific model that kind of comes to mind? 50s, 60s era, is that what you're thinking? You know, I've always liked the James Bond looking thing. You know, it could be an Aston Martin. It could be, you know, when I say Ferrari, I I really don't even, I'm not a big Ferrari lover. I guess it's just the thought of doing something that would really piss people off. And <laughs> and that, that would probably be the biggest way to do it. But no, I don't have a certain car, but it would, I just like to do some European cars with yeah. a little American muscle, but... I still love the European interiors and not not ruin what they have. So there's there's just yeah, swell them out. Maybe an eighteen hundred Volvo that's swelled out. You know, just there's a lot of them. So, but I guess my answer would be a European car, American muscle with the European styled interior in it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of cool that Louis Shevchik and his team there inspired you uh, to go down that yeah. path. And, uh, you know, these days, a lot of older European cars are worth so much that people wouldn't dare do something like that to them. But since I'm footing the bill, who cares? We'll have some fun with it and right. blow it out and swell exactly. it up. What the hell? Hey, Jim, <laughs> what could I build for you today if I hired you guys to build something on my dime? I think I'd want to... Uh the world's fastest amphitheater car <laughs> <laughs> on, on land and water. Oh, my gosh. I would love to be able to hit the water doing about 95 at the boat dock. And, oh, my uh, gosh. It's awesome, man. But seriously, how much better could it get? You go up to your cabin, you pass everybody on the way up there, I mean, you're literally in the water before anybody. <laughs> you know, this is why I wanted to ask this question, because I knew when you ask the Ring Brothers to build something, you don't get anything you ever expect. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun, though? you got to admit, yeah. that'd be a fun car. <laughs> that would be insane. You know, we could combine something here, Mike, with Jim's idea. is an old uh, boat tail vehicle from the 30s 40s and then put some big power in it and turn it into this amphicar because you're going to need a little bigger breadth than an amphicar to hit it doing 90 <laughs> miles an hour or it's going to blow up yeah. right yeah i think you're right yeah you know you guys have taken me on a really great ride again i'm really appreciative of you coming back i'm so proud of what you guys have done and what you've built and the fact that you've created this business that brings so much joy to so many of our lives when we look at your builds. I would encourage listeners out there, if you're not real aware of the Ring Brothers, uh, you got a website, right, where people can see what you're doing? We do. It's uh, ringbrothers.com. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook or uh, Instagram. We always post a lot of cool stuff. And we also have uh, on our website Ring Brothers University, which, uh, you know, we just show some techniques and some of the stuff the way we do it. And if yep. you're interested, go on there and check it out. All right. Well, remind you listeners, I'll put a link to all of these on uh, Jim and Mike's show notes page, uh, ringbrothers.com. You can go to carsyout.com and find it there as well. Links to all these. I think you're going to bring, I know we're going to bring a big smile to your face when you see what these guys are up to. They are living the dream and creating dreams for so many of us. Even if we can't have you build a car, we get to at least experience it. And congratulations again on the Battle of the Builders last year. Awesome job, what you guys did there with Val 3. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for spending some time with me again today. Thank you for your expertise and for sharing your life with us here on Cars Yeah. Until we talk again, I'll see you guys, the Ring Brothers, down the road. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. You're welcome. This has been great. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? 
If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting, but what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!